To become the person that you would like to be, you create a mental picture of your newly conceived self. And if you continue to hold it, the day will come when you are in reality that person. Shakespeare said, Assume the virtue if you have it not. Now let's take this great truth and follow some of its implications. In assuming the virtue, you are assuming via your imagination. But here we must make a distinction between daydreaming and a true mental picture or proper use of the imagination. Perhaps there is some genie who will drop a hundred thousand dollars into your lap or overnight provide you with a mansion luxuriously furnished. I have never had the pleasure of meeting one, but daydreaming or mere undirected wishful thinking doesn't have the power to release the latent forces within you that will bring you the one hundred thousand dollars or the mansion. When you employ your imagination properly, you see yourself doing a thing and you go ahead and do it. It's the doing the thing you have pictured to yourself that brings it into actual existence. In this connection, think about the use of the magnifying glass. When properly focused, it will gather the light from the sun and concentrate it, so that the heat will burn a hole in the object on which the rays are focused. It must be held steady before the heat power is developed, and so it is with the holding of the image or the mental picture. However, it is very difficult for the average person to concentrate for any length of time, to say nothing of holding on to a mental picture for any great period. You are constantly being swayed by what you read and hear, and as a result, the coordinating part of this creative force turns to gathering together all these scattered elements in a focused mass, instead of devoting itself to making a clear and dynamic picture of your desire. Often, I have thought of this matter of desire and suggestion in connection with the planting of vegetable or flower seeds. Once the soil is prepared and the tiny seeds are placed in it, it only takes a short time until they begin to root and sprouts begin to appear. The moment they start upward through the soil in search of light, sunshine and moisture, obstacles mean nothing to them. They will push aside small stones or bits of wood, and if they can't do that, they'll extend themselves and grow around them. So it can be with you and the suggestions you give to your subconscious mind. The results will be pure or complex depending upon the original seed and the attention which you give it. In other words, plant the right kind of seed and habitually feed it with strong affirmative thought always directed toward the same end. It will grow into a mighty force finding ways and means of overcoming all obstacles. I have been in the private offices of a great many industrial leaders, businessmen, great bankers and others. Long before this magic of belief was understood by me, I was impressed with the pictures, photographs, slogans, bits of statuary, and so forth, which were to be found in the inner sanctums of great firms. Undoubtedly, many of you have seen or heard of such displays, but has it ever occurred to you what their purpose was? There can only be one answer, and that is, they serve as a constant reminder, getting the picture over to the occupant of the room, that he too can succeed as those did before him. In common with other great men, Thomas A. Edison obviously knew the value of the repeated suggestion and made use of it. Among the articles found in his desk was a piece of paper that said, When down in the mouth, remember Jonah. He came out all right. Edison must have thought well of that expression and perhaps reflected much upon it. So, let's get down to the mechanics. Find yourself three or four cards. Ordinary business cards will do. In your office, your home, your room, or any other place where you can have privacy. Sit down and ask yourself what you desire above everything else. When the answer comes and you are certain that it is your uppermost desire, then at the top of one card, write a word picture of it. One or two words may be sufficient. A, a job, a better job, more money, a home of your own. Then on each card, duplicate the word picture from the original. Carry one in your billfold or handbag. Place another alongside your bed or fasten it to your bedstead. Place another on your shaving mirror or dressing table and still another on your desk. The whole idea, as you may have guessed, is to enable you to see mentally the picture at all hours of the day, just before going to sleep at night.
and upon waking in the morning are two very important moments of the 24 hours in which to concentrate upon your thoughts with added force. But don't stop just with those two periods. The more often you can visualize the desire by this method, or one of your own devising for that matter, the speedier the materialization. At the start, you may have no idea of how the results are to come. Don't worry. Just leave it to the subconscious mind which has its own ways of making contacts and of opening doors and avenues that you may never even have thought of. You will receive assistance from the most unexpected sources. You may be suddenly struck with the idea of seeing a person that you have not heard from in a long time or calling upon a man you've never seen before. You may get the idea of writing a letter or making a telephone call. Whatever the idea is, follow it. It cannot be too strongly emphasized that you should tell no one just what the words on the cards mean. Don't give anyone an inkling of what you desire. The truth is that when you talk about what you're going to do, you scatter your forces. You lose the close connection you have with the subconscious. And you frequently find that unless you do as directed, you will have to start all over again in your program of achievement. Go and tell no man still holds true. Suppose you want a better job or promotion. Not only use the cards, but keep telling yourself constantly and continuously that you are going to get that job. You have already visualized it if you have accepted this science, but the repetition will be the means of driving the suggestion deeply and firmly into the subconscious mind. This may be compared to driving a nail into a board. The first tap puts the nail in place, but it is only by a number of heavy strokes that the nail is driven home. It has been my observation that those who consciously use this science, as well as those who may be using it unconsciously, are people of tremendous energies, virtually human dynamos. They are people who not only use their imagination and hold strong beliefs and convictions, but they are great doers in action. And that brings me to this most important statement. Faith without action is dead.